Hello and welcome to Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits channel. Today I'm going to brew this little beauty. Evil Dog Double IPA. It's from Bulldog Kits and uh, for me one of the best quality uh, brewing kits on the market. It's got an ABV of 7.5% alcohol and trust me When I did it last year, I thought it was as high as 10 and 11 percent. It was as strong as they come. So, first things first with any brew, where have I put it? Is your bucket. I already sterilised this a few days ago, but let's do it that we're doing it from fresh, because let's be fair, like I always say, you know, Cleanliness is godliness. So, all the kettle already. Get your sterilising fluid, well, you know, what you use for babies, or you can use cat tablets, whatever you use, a bit of sterilising fluid, chuck it in. And then, Hot water. Some of these sterilising kits, sterilising jobs, you can sterilise it for five to ten minutes. And um, now we're going to chuck the lid, lid on. Get a good swirl round. Turn it upside down and swirl it over a sink. And it will also do the, the hole for the airlock, which is there, that little red hole that you can see. And it will also help round the edges as well. Because like anything, you've got to be sterile, sterile you know. You don't want to be paying, so while that's doing, you don't want to be paying 20 odd quid for the kit. And just to find out then, that you've not sterilised it and uh, something happens and basically you're chucking it away you know none of us want that it costs too much and you're doing this to save money and to try nice craft beers as well right so I'm going to boil the kettle again now what you should do with, with a lot of these beer kits is um, this beer kit is a three kilogram beer kit Two types of beer kits mainly for, for brewers, unless you can start going to grains, and I'm not doing grains, you know, that's more specialist. You know, that's when we really want, really getting into it. But for me, you're going to boil the kettle, and while that's doing its thing, I'm going to get a knife, try not to cut myself. Not an overly sharp knife. Right, I'm going to cut, the, cut this open. Now this is Evil Dog, double IPA, strong as they come. It's got a right kit, you've got hot pellets, and that's Summit 2507. They go in after, towards the end of fermentation, so we're not worried about them. Hot pellets, Simcoe. So again, they go in at the end. Unless I'm lying, hang on. Yeah. Ah. This is a bag. Right, so difference. If it was tins, you'd warm the tins up first and you'd put the tin in a jug, you know. Decent sized jug and you'd fill it up and you'd leave it for 10 minutes for it to warm the mould up and you'll know because if you try and do it without doing that it's a bloody swine getting the mould out so and here's our beer yeast beer yeast Pacific Ale for 20 to 25 litres and that's all that comes with it really you've got the instructions we're not overly worried about them at the moment I know what I'm doing if you're doing it, read the instructions, but you know, really, if you follow what I'm doing, 
you'll be okay. Right. So, give it another swirl. We'll give it a few minutes now. Open it up and either use some plastic gloves or wait a little longer till it's walk cooled down. And then go around the edge. If you can see this on the camera. See the edge here. Get get the water out, out of the bucket, go around the edge. Make sure there's nothing from a previous brew. If it's your first time brewing, if it's your first time brewing, then you know it's not too much of a problem that ain't. Same with the lid. Go around the edges of the lid all the way around with a bit of hot, this hot sterilized water. Trust me, in the end it's you've got to be you've got to be clean. Some of, the, some of these sterilising solutions, all you've got to do is sterilise it like this, pour it away, and you're ready. With this one I'm using, you sterilise it, and then you're going to bang a bit of water in, and then you're ready for using. In the bucket, I've also got my airlock and my tube, so I'm sterilising them. And I always feel that whenever you're doing one of these buckets, not that you need to be sterilising your, your pipe and your tube at this moment, but why not sterilise it? You're doing this anyway, you're sterilising them. So for the next, for when you do need them, they're already sterilised. And it's just a, another quick sterilisation again. minutes because to be fair I've already done it a few days ago. Right, now I'm going to run cold water over the um, you can see, let's have a look see if I can see. It's very hard to see here. Yeah. I'm running cold water over the top just to get rid of any sterilising solution. Leave that there, leave that on the side now to dry. And then I'm also going to do the same for the bucket. I'm just going to pour what, what's in the bucket out, all the rest of the water, the airlock in the tube, and then a good place to do this is in the bath if, you haven't, if you've got, not got the area in your sink. Just quarter fill it with water, alternating it round, like what I'm doing here. I'm alternating it round. By doing that, it's it's getting any water and anything left on the edges. But let's be fair, if you've sterilised it properly, you shouldn't have any the previous time, and you've not left too much of a gap, you shouldn't have too much, you know, of anything that shouldn't be in there. So I'm just going to swish it once more. Swish it cold water, swish the cold water around, pour it away. And uh, let's have a look. See now, now it's ready for filling. Got, got my um, lid there in the sink. Got the airlock, just get a swish a bit of water on that. That's perfect, that can go there now, that's ready for the job. So here's the bag, as you can see. Now you're going to be pouring some hot water in there at some stage because you want to get all the fluid out. So it's hot, use gloves or something, you know, don't scold yourself. Sometimes it's best to leave it in the box. It all depends on what you want to do. Right, for now, I'm going to start pouring it into the bucket. And we'll go back on there. There we go. Yep, I'm still recording. Right, so I'm going to open this up. Like so. Might have to pull it. Yeah, there's a plastic ring inside to pull. So pull. Just 
get rid of that in this ribbon. And that, as you can see, I'm going to pour it into the bucket. It's like a thick, goopy. With the three kilogram kits, which this is one, or the two tin kits, you don't need any sugar. It's not gospel because I've got a kit in there that's three kilogram that does need sugar, or brewing sugar. I mean, I tend to use granulated sugar. You can use brewing sugar, but it's going to put your costs up. So, you know, it's all down to the person and, uh, you know, how far you want to go, you know. But obviously, every little thing you do extra or is all going to cost more in the long run. Now, you're going to, you're going to fill the kettle up three times and uh, you're going to do a mixture. You want it lukewarm, the water, so that when you put the yeast in, you know, put, if it's too hot, it'll kill the yeast. If it's too cold, it won't get the yeast going. And as you can see, that's going in nicely. Yep, you can see it on the camera. Get as much in as I can, because then I'm going to wash the box out then. And as you can see, it's going in. Got a lovely look to it. Let's show you while it's in its uh, undiluted state. There you go. Lovely. Got some lovely colours to it. Caramel colour. Otherwise, it's not going to look like that at the end, trust me. Just squeeze the rest in. Right. I'm going to try and turn it up so that I don't lose any of my liquid. Right, now, here's the tricky bit because you've got to get hot water into it. It's probably best to put it back into the box. do it that way. So with it in the box, I've got to do this with one hand so it's a little bit tricky. So I'm going to pour it in, hot water, now the hope is it doesn't knacker the um, plastic but it shouldn't do. Right, that'll do for one and then the rest can just go in there. And then I'm going to put the kettle on again because what I like to do is do two kettles first, stir that malt around, and get it get it loose. And so when when you because it's it's better to do it while it's at the bottom with the hot water than when it's full, and uh, half of it doesn't you know it just stays in the solid block at the bottom, which is not what you want. Right, kettle's on again. So, there's that bag now. Right, it's a little bit hot, so just be careful what you're doing. Just be wary of any leaks, you know, because you know it shouldn't leak, you just don't know. And what you want to do is get it, swirl it round until the bag's clean, you know, then you know you've got the majority of the, the beer solution out. Look at that, you look now, and that's pretty much spot on there. And then, very carefully, undo the lid first, and carefully pour it in. There we have it. That's now empty. And you could use it again if you want to put beer in there. No, I'm not. I'm just going to bin it. Recycle bin. So, just going to run some hot water because here's my stirrer. People have heard call me a stirrer, so I'm used to stirring. But I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to sterilise it. I should really have sterilised it before then. So, if you remember, Sterilise it in the solution. I'm just going to pour hot water over it, which does the same sort of thing anyway. And it's plastic, don't use wood. Because the wood, if you've used it for other things, the wood will give off flavours. 
uh, or even bacteria. So use plastic or metal. Just waiting for my warm water to warm up a bit. What we'll do, I'll do a day by day blog with this and let you know, you know, how it's going. So with, with the stirrer, I'm just putting hot water over both sides, right the way up the shaft. And that's it, that's nice stirrer. So, I'll wash me, wipe my hands, because I'm going to try and hold this and talk at the same time. <laughs> right, and as you can see, it's very scoopy at the moment. So we're going to keep stirring it, try and... Try and make it less thick. You're going you're to need another kettle of water, you know. It's just one of them things. We're in a lovely dark colour. Don't worry if it's not the colour of the beer that you thought you were buying because it, it all changes in beer since it starts growing. The kits generally are dark and then they go light. to me. Right, another kettle of water, hot water. Here we go again. Just pour it in. Try not to splash it. You don't want splats of beer with your kitchen walls and stuff. It won't please the wife. The same again. Cut down on time while you stirring it through that kettle again because you're going to want three in a this is a 1.7 litre kettle I usually put about five and a half to six litres of hot water and then obviously you've got the sugar and if there's put sugar in it and then you've got the malt solution you know your beer kit itself and then fill the rest of cold water as long as it's lukewarm and you're done that's what matters. Do not pour your yeast on top until it is lukewarm. Let it cool down a bit and then pour the yeast. It's supposed to be, I think it's 25, 20 something degrees. It's, every kit's slightly different. So, you know, try and get to the kit. But generally lukewarm. And as you can see now, on the bottom, there's no resistance now. It's just lovely now. It's dead easy to stir it's got a lovely smell to it especially when you put the hops in so when you feel that you've stirred it in and you're not getting that pockets of resistance from like the you know strong gloopy stuff when it just feels all the same you know same sort of liquidy stuff then you know then that you can put your your spatula down so you stir it down for a bit and then put it on top of your on top of your lid with your you know your airlock put that out of the way somewhere where it's not going to get anything on it back to stay there now we're in the process of filling it with hot and cold water so I've got a kettle on big jug, we need a big jug and like again you know first things first give this a quick wash out in a bit of hot water just to sterilize it if you need to sterilize it but hot water should do the trick right get, get, get your cold water on fill it with cold water as I'm doing right. can you see? Let's see oh yeah 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 Let's see very hard to do it with one hand. I need, a, need an apprentice. And now we're going to fill this in. Run it down the side so you don't splat all over your kitchen. Now we're going to go up to, I think it's 23 litres. 
I'm going to go 24 because I know how strong this gets anyway. So it's still going to be strong enough. Plus, and then I went, went with the sediment on the bottom, I'm not going to lose any of my pines, which is critical, obviously. I've had this kit before. The only mistake I made was the secondary carbonation, put too much, a bit too much sugar in. Keep filling it. So the, what we're now, 20 minutes in. So you, you're going to put anything up to an hour for this task, this part of the task. Getting sourcing everything beforehand always helps. Make sure you've got the right ingredients, uh, sterilising stuff, jug, and whatnot. Or another kettle in, hot kettle in. And then I'm only going to half fill the kettle in there, so I don't feel that I need to put any more than that in, a lot of water. Again, it's got a lovely smell to it. So, quickly half fill the kettle again. I need to get this a stand slightly lower down so you can actually see better what I'm doing. Another half kettle on. We're now up to 17 litres. So 17 litres on, on the bucket. Always helps to have a bucket with the writing on the side, you know. Otherwise it's going to make things awkward. I may not need that other kettle. So as you can see, it's filling up quite nicely. Looks a bit like dishwater at the moment. <laughs> Some of them have a rancid smell as well, you know, but don't be worried. That to me is nice and lukewarm, and it's going to go in my beer room, which today could reach 90 degrees, so I'm not too worried about it going too high. If it was in winter, I'd want to make sure it was at the top of the lukewarm. Right, now I'm going to get it to 24 litres. over the 24 litre mark, slightly more than what the manufacturer recommends but make sure you leave a gap because this is going to bubble up and froth up like a swine especially in warm conditions like it is at the moment remember that don't leave it with a little gap otherwise you're going to regret it when it's all frothing up over your floor in your shed or the kitchen it's lukewarm to touch which means it's bang on for putting the yeast on some of these yeast, they ask you to do it a certain way. Uh, let me just double check the instructions. So, we're not worried about the hot pellets just yet. So yeah, a maximum 25 degrees centigrade. Don't get it any higher than that. And then you just sprinkle the yeast on top. So you might need some sort of scissors or something. Some of these are stirring, some of these you don't. I don't think you need to stir it in, it's going to sort its own way out. It's going to go down, it's, you know. And 
and sit there. Right, that's it. Make sure we've got it all out. Chuck the yeast back in the box for later. And then we could give it another stir. I'm not worried. Not, not really. So, chuck that in the dishwasher. Make sure your airlock has got some water in it. Otherwise, you know, you've just got to be sterile. So there we go. Two lots of water in it. Put it on the top. And that, that is day one of the Bulldog Brewing Kit and basically any kit. You're going to leave this now and over the next few days it's going to start to bubble. It should bubble within a few hours, especially in the warmth. You're going to leave it a few days. By the end of anything from a week to two weeks, depending on how warm it is, there's lots of factors involved. Give it as long as you can. When it stops bubbling all together, if you sit in the room for two minutes and it's not bubbled at all, you know, it means it's finished. If it hasn't bubbled at all, then it may be that your yeast isn't working. I've had the problems with yeast on Cooper's kits. So, if, that, if by the end of the week it's not moved at all, it's either you're having to get, a, get a, a yeast rehydrator or go somewhere like Wilco's, go and buy some of their universal yeast, bang it on top, and that will sort it. Right, thanks for watching. Part 2, soon.